gentle people and welcome to another Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. A uh, couple of weeks back uh, I was cleaning up my workspace and came across these hexagon tiles uh, and decided to go ahead and um, make some coasters using alcohol inks and of course I think that's video oh I don't know the number video one I don't know, video 112 or something, you'd have to look it up. Um, but yeah, made these and they turned out absolutely stunning. Uh, iridescent using that pearl alcohol ink. So, uh, I also came across a box of square ceramic tiles and so decided uh, to be sort of nostalgic and go back and make another set of ceramic tiles. Again, I stopped doing the ceramic, I actually stopped doing the ceramic primarily because the cost of shipping these was so much greater than um, shipping resin coasters. These are quite heavy if you're talking about shipping. And so I kind of moved away from doing the um, ceramic completely. These, these really, these really are, they really turned out nice. I am so pleased with how these turned out. Um, but anyway, uh, today I'm going to be doing square coasters and I am going to be doing the decoration using something called Resi Blast. So all right, let me move these and let's get to our materials. Uh, and hopefully you will be inspired uh, to create something beautiful. I am making a set of beverage coasters for a gentleman friend of mine and he has a definite preference for the ceramic over the resin and when he saw the hexagon coasters I made a couple of weeks back he asked me if I'd make a set for him and I don't have hexagon all I have are square tiles so I have four of the ceramic tiles that I purchased uh, at Home Depot. Okay, so let's take a look at the materials that we need. Again, I am going to be using the ceramic, the four inch ceramic tiles that I got from Home Depot. So we will need our resin. I use the Craftsmart resin. Uh, primarily because of the discounts that I get when I purchase it at Michael's. And we need the Part B hardener. We will need some painter's tape to go on the back side of those coasters. We'll need our measuring cup. I'm going to be using four colors of mica powder, so I need four of the small paper cups. We need our nitro gloves. We need our four stir sticks. And then for mica powders, uh, I kind of have <clears throat> kind of have a metallic theme in my head. So I'm going to be using the May Spring Silver Lining, the May Spring Golden Labradorite, the Rolio. This is new for me, Rolio Silver Ash. It's kind of sparkly. And then my old standby, the Pearl X Super Copper. And what we'll use to make the designs in these is this product called Resi Blast. And it really is just silicone in a bottle, but that's what we're using Resi Blast. So those are our materials. Let's clear the table and get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is just tape off the backs 
of each of these uh, tile. And that's so when um, we pour the resin, And this painter's tape is nice and wide. And then we just trim this with a razor blade. Oops. And then I'll go back and fill those two ends. <coughs> Okay, so now we need to mix our resin. I always mark on my uh, measuring container how much I need. Basically, I do 10 milliliters per coaster. So since this is four coasters, that's going to be 40 milliliters. So I have 20 and 40 marked off. I always remind people to make sure that they are using or following the manufacturer's instructions because they do vary from brand to brand. Craft Smart asks you to do a one-to-one -one mixing ratio, which is equal parts of A and B, and then they tell you to mix for a minimum of five minutes. So that's what we're going to do. So we are doing 20 milliliters of the Part B hardener. and 20 milliliters of the Part A resin. And we are going to mix for five minutes. So now we want to divide our resin into these four cups. Um, more in three and less in one. So that dark Rolio silver ash, I'm just going to do a little bit of that. And then divide the rest of this between these three. And you're just eyeballing it. It doesn't have to be exact. And then we'll mix our colors. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with the silver ash and I mean it's a little bit with mica powder a little bit goes such a long ways and this is such a teeny bit of mica of resin in that container so there's the silver ash And then we're going to do ooh, the May Spring Silver Lining. This is pretty. Too 
of silver. And then we're going to do some copper. Again, we want that metallic theme going on. And this became one of my favorite colors during the fall, this golden Labradorite. Actually, this hasn't been opened yet because I still have some in the sample pack. So we're going to use what's in the sample pack. So the colors are mixed. Let's move these out the way. When I was doing um, acrylic, using acrylic paints for my coasters, I always did them on this little rack right here because I could do six at a time or however many I needed for however many I needed, and then uh, anything that ran off would run down. And it was just easier than trying to um, elevate them on cups. All right, so here is where the fun begins. Uh, I'm putting this on these in no particular order. So I'll start with the silver, and I'll pour the silver across here, across here, across here. Okay, so that's our silver, and let's put drizzle some of this uh, silver ash next to that. I'm not entirely sure why I poured on the diagonal. Uh, but I did, so that's the way. So that's the way it will be. And then the golden Labradorite. And finally, the copper. All right. <laughs> And I'm going to take my small palette knife and just move this around a little bit, spread it out some.
And the same with the gold. Just spread that a little bit. And then I'm going to use the heat gun to pop air bubbles, but also to start blending the colors. All right, and now I'm just going to Blend those, spread that a little more. Right. And so the goal, <clears throat> the goal here was to be able to use the uh, resi blast to make some designs. And so what I am going to do is just put drops on here. And already you see how that's spread out. And I'm just adding some more of this uh, darker one to create more contrast. And we'll actually take care of the edges um, after this kind of sets. Because what happens if you do the edges now, this just runs off and it runs down onto the rack. It does not stay on the sides. Look at that. Look how that has just spread. That's weird.
Okay, so we're going to leave this like this for now, and we'll back, be back in about 15 minutes. Um, but look at the, how that created those streaks. That's beautiful. Okay, so now I'm going to just take whatever resin is left in these cups and go along these edges. Because now this will stick it'll stay it's not going to just run down That's pretty cool. And to have the white of the tile show through, that's not something I expected, but I'm going to leave it just like that because I like the look. See, this is like glue now. I love this tile. Again, when you get to the end, you always have a little teeny bit of resin left in the bottom of your cup, and so that's what I'm using to do the sides with, whatever kind of pooled. And make sure you get the corners. Make sure you get the corners of your tile. And I am going to turn this so I can see the other side. I may have to mix a tad more of the gold.
It's okay, guys. stealing some off the top because I don't have any more gold in this cup. But the good thing about resin is it's self-leveling. And if you add some heat to it, that'll speed it up a little bit, thin it out some. got these little white spots just a little bit of heat but that's my favorite tile right there that one's beautiful Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. All my sides are done. I really like this one. The way that kind of created those, those streaks. And it started streaking and then stopped. Uh, I don't want to hit it with heat and mess up the design. I'm gonna leave it just like it is. If you have something and it's okay, leave it because what happens is when you start messing with it, you mess it up. So one thing I do when the resin oop, is at the end of the cup like that, I heat it up and let it use the drips. So. That's what I'm talking about. I like that. Yes. Let's see, I got any more drips that I can drip. Let's try the silver. Ooh, you see the smoke? It's real hot.
you can see the smoke coming from the cup. All right, that I'm loving that. I am really loving that. Let's see anything left in this cup. Oh. oh, looks like I mean that cup is empty, but maybe we can get a drop out of this one as well. Let's see. are beautiful. The air bubble right there. And I did say this is self-leveling so you can see how that evened out. So that's it. We are done. I'm loving this. So we will cover these and uh, that is beautiful. That is re those are really, really beautiful. This was my favorite with the streaks coming all the way across. And then that corner, that, that corner there. But going back and adding the drips just, it gives it kind of a, um, I don't know, it speaks sort of, kind of an African print, kind of a Native American thing going on. Uh, I'm very pleased with these. All right, let's get them covered and let them cure. It is the next day, so we are going to take the cover off of this. I'm telling you, I love the way these turned out. So let's get them off the tray here. favorite one. Oh, there, oops. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so let's take a look, see. Ah. All right. 
hear what uh, I don't know if you can see my fingerprint on that but uh, this because I put silicone on here that's actually oily so we're gonna take some alcohol and wipe the silicone off of this Yeah, 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 yeah. Completely forgot how oily this stuff is. When I was doing canvases and I was putting silicone, when I was doing acrylic pour, <clears throat> the fluid art on canvases, uh, the first thing I discovered was that if you put the um, silicone in your paint, when you go to resin, the final, the finished, the resin did not take wherever there was um, silicone. And boy, that was a hard one to have to learn. So you've got to make sure. And I actually wound up on one of my canvases. Um, I had so such beautiful cells. I'm telling you, it was gorgeous. And I actually wound up washing, excuse me, washing the canvas off in Dove dishwashing liquid just to get rid of all of the oil, all of that silicone. Okay, so I think these are... I think these are fine now. Um, so we need to take the tape off the back. And where the tape does not come off easily, we're going to use our heat gun. I have this um, heat proof mat here. Okay, so to get this tape off, because I have these little beads here, we're just going to heat them. There we go. That's what we want. two corners here again a little bit of heat And then I just run the heat gun along this edge. It's got a little bit of resin that's seeped underneath. So we're just going to heat this and scrape it off.
Alrighty, so now we're going to take these out back and we're going to spray the back sides of these. Again, if you are selling these, someone picks this up and they say, oh, that's beautiful because they like it. And that is beautiful. They like the design. You don't want them to turn it over and see the tile, the ceramic piece of it. So we're going to go outside and paint these. Okay, so I am out back on my patio. I have the Rust-Oleum 2X. <clears throat> I love this stuff because it has the primer in it. And this is nutmeg. I'm gonna shake it real good. And then just lightly spray. let that dry and then we'll add our rubber bumps. Okay, so we sprayed the backs of each of these and before we put our rubber bumps on, one thing we need to do is wipe off, uh, again, acetone nail polish remover and you wanna wipe off, see the overspray on this? You want to wipe off any of the overspray so that the side of this coaster is not brown, but in fact the colors that are supposed to be here actually show through. Yep. And so to finish these off now, we just need to add our 3M rubber bumps. And again, I'm always saying I use the rubber bumps because they last a long time, unlike cork that's going to dry, become dry, dry out and become brittle and then break off and crack up and make a mess on your table got our four rubber bumps and the really nice thing about the rubber bumps is they are non-skid I'm not sure if the camera can can capture this but when you put the resi blast on and it moves the resin this actually left an indentation I, I don't know that I can capture it with with the light that's in here. But these circles are, are depressions. So the resin is up here and then where the oil pushed it out, it sink. It has it's like a little sinkhole. Now if I were just using these for me, I would leave it just like that. If I were selling these, I would then go back and put a clear coat on this so that the whole surface is level. That one not so bad. But yeah, there they are. They are done.